Seven goals, two penalties, a late winner, a sending off. There is so much to discuss. What a fixture that was. That was truly one of my favourite ever Champions League games. I think that was up there in terms of drama, jeopardy, talking points, moments, goals. It really was sensational. The Champions League, it's just pure, isn't it? It's poetry. It's wonderful. And that was an example of it. Off the back of the game that we had just a couple of nights ago, Chelsea playing Tottenham in an electrifying derby. So much to discuss, so much going on, so much conjecture. Football's just amazing, isn't it? Football is really just unrivaled. It's unmatched. And do you know what? It's not often that I say this these days, but twice in a week shows you quite how lucky we are at the moment. Again, tonight, Manchester United away at Copenhagen. It really was a delectable medley of footballing splendour. One of the great Champions League games. And the irony of it is, Manchester United played the best that they have played this season for 40 minutes. They were... Brilliant. They were completely in control of the game. They were dominant. They were ruthless in front of goal. They took their chances. They were stingy at the back. There was a good shape to them. And I think they looked really good for 40 minutes. And yet, can you believe I'm saying these words? I now think they have to sack their manager. It isn't about tonight per se. But what we have learned tonight is that even when it goes right, Ten Hag cannot get his team to do what is necessary. Now look, I know that tonight was a very different kind of defeat for Manchester United fans. This isn't the defeat that we have seen them employ many times this season. This was a different kind of defeat. They were robbed. And it is true that they were robbed. The decisions were appalling. But Ten Hag has made some atrocious decisions. How can you possibly be chasing a game away from home in the Champions League and you take off a man who has scored two goals already that night in Hoyland? To bring on Mason Mount. It just doesn't make sense. And look, Manchester United, again, were the architects of their own downfall. Dallow, Wan-Bissaka, horrific mistakes. But that isn't what cost Manchester United today. It was the officiating. The officiating was appalling. The Marcus Rashford sending off, if you believe that that's a legitimate sending off, I am afraid that you have totally missed the point. Listening to Paul Scholes talk about about it. Listening to Owen Hargreaves talk about it. Two excellent professionals. Professionals who have won the Champions League. They both deduced that it wasn't a sending off. You then listen to Robbie Savage talk about it and he thinks it was. I think that tells us all we need to know. Robbie Savage, for some reason, thinks that it was a sending off. Maybe because his boy was released from the club and there's a bitterness there. Maybe because he was released. Because it is a ludicrous decision. I find it so frustrating. I don't understand why a pundit in the privileged position that Robbie Savage is in doesn't have it about him to call it out as a ridiculous decision. So fair play to Hargreaves and Scholes because it obviously, obviously wasn't a sending off. I mean, the thing that I found amazing is when the decision was first presented to us, we were looking at the ankle. And although I think Marcus Rashford was trying to step wide of the ball in order to protect it, he was trying to plant his foot in order to get steady, wait for the uh, oncoming challenge, he caught the fella's ankle. Maybe you could argue that it was dangerous and therefore... Potentially a sending off. I think it would be wrong. I think it would be harsh. And I think it would be incorrect. But I can understand why. It wasn't given for that. It was given for an arm protecting the ball. I mean, can you imagine Les Ferdinand playing today? Can you imagine Mark Hughes playing today? It was a ludicrous decision. But what doesn't change the fact are now this. Manchester United have now lost nine games this season. That is more than they have won. They were 2-0 up. And they were winning 3-2. And they still have gifted a victory to Copenhagen. And whether you think they were robbed, whether you think they were unlucky, whether you think individual mistakes cost them, this is a Ten Hag issue. There is now an endemic problem with Eric Ten Hag. He is out of his depth at the club and I believe that he has to go. I think this is the end. If there ever were an end in sight, it would be now. And losing to Copenhagen, whatever the situation, whatever the refs have done, they went in at half-time and they had an opportunity to put it right. Manchester United had an opportunity to look around the dressing room and say, do you know what, lads? We've been robbed here. Marcus Rashford has been wrongly sent off, but we're going to win it for Marcus. In the way that Manchester United went into the dressing room away at Tottenham Hotspur 3-0 down and won the game 5-3. It was an opportunity for this crop of players, and Eric Ten Hag as well, to demonstrate that there is a resilience and a togetherness to this squad. And then they found themselves winning the game against such beatable opposition in the Champions League. And it's just a season of lows. 
And I don't believe that Eric Ten Hag has the minerals or is capable of turning this around. It is a season of lows for Manchester United. And do you know what I think the most revealing, in terms of like the culture at the club, what I think the most revealing uh, piece of information I can give you. I have a lot of Manchester United. I grew up in London. I have a lot of Manchester United fans of, uh, that are mates of mine. I don't know one Manchester United fan, Adam McCola included, by the way, who was confident of a victory in Copenhagen in the Champions League. I mean, Manchester United obviously should be going into a fixture like that and they should be winning the game. And the fact that they conceded two in the space of four minutes, twice in the same game. Where's the leadership? You shouldn't be vulnerable when you just score. People say that's when you're at your most vulnerable. But you aren't vulnerable when there's a leader on the pitch. When there is a captain worthy of the armband. When there is genuine leadership. Genuine togetherness. To concede two goals within the space of four minutes twice in the same game. It's truly, truly ridiculous. And yes, they were robbed. Yes, Rashford shouldn't have gone off. Yes, they were unlucky. All of it is true. So much happened tonight. But their response to setbacks is woeful. They're consistently woeful at dealing with things when they don't go their way. And you have to be resilient. You have to have that in your character. And I would say, not only in terms of football, but, you know, if there is one word that defines Manchester United as a football club, resilient could be it. Genuinely, think about Manchester United, what it represents, the British institution, the club as a whole. Not this crop of players, the club as a whole. What word would you use? What, what are Manchester United? Resilient? I think that's fair. Defiant? <laughs> this team is not resilient. It's not defying. defiant. It's, it's actually flimsy. It's actually beatable. It's actually spineless. And whether you think Eric Ten Hag is the right man for the job or not, the results mean he isn't. Because when you lose a dressing room, and trust me, I'm a Chelsea fan, I've seen it a lot. If you lose a dressing room... I have no example ever in the history of football, I believe, where a manager has lost a dressing room and then managed to recover it. And I believe that he has lost his dressing room. I believe that these players are no longer playing for him. And therefore, what is the point in persevering? There is no point in sticking to Eric Ten Hag if he's clearly not that bloke. And he is making mistakes. I mentioned this earlier. Taking off Hoyland, ridiculous. Bringing on Mount for Hoyland, ridiculous. So many of the signings, ridiculous. Manchester United are currently incapable of playing out from the back. They can't play out from the back, and yet they are sticking to that system. It's costing them. How can you take off Hoyland? He scored two goals. It just doesn't make sense. And obviously, when they went down to 10 men, it's really tough. I, be I honestly believe that had they kept 11 men on the pitch, they would have won the game at a canter. I think they would have probably won the game about 5-0. I think that's what they were on course for. But... Some will say that it's harsh of me to blame Ten Hag. But I honestly think that there is a there is a way that it's his fault. Could Martial have helped? I think the thing I'd like to leave you with, and I'd like your comments in the section below if you would let me know. Manchester United effectively now have a playoff in Istanbul. I don't think they can win that game with Eric Ten Hag as manager. If you do, let me know. And maybe I'm wrong. And if you do believe that they can win that game with Eric Ten Hag as manager, then I guess they should keep him. But I honestly don't. Anyway, they're my thoughts on the game and I would love to hear yours. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've all had a wonderful night. I certainly have. See you in a bit.